Hey guys, my name is Demis Rizzoli and today I'm going to be showing you what's in my camera bag. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope everyone's staying safe and staying creative during these uncertain times. Today I thought I'd show you what's in my camera bag when I usually go on a shoot. I've packed it up, ready to go. So it's, it seems like I'm about to go on a shoot, but I'm just gonna open up the bag, each zipper, and I'll show you how I pack it up and what's in my bag. So over the last few weeks, I've been updating my website and there's actually a gear page on there. And I've put on there every single item that I use for photography. It includes lots of items that I won't be including in this video. So go check that page out. Each item is connected to an Amazon US affiliate link. So if you're interested in purchasing any of the items on the list, please consider using those links as it will help me as a creator at no extra cost to you. They're all Amazon US links and Adobe links, but if you're in Australia and really want to support me, you can send me a DM and I can send you a customized link as well. All right, so let's get started. So this is the backpack that I use on all my shoots and when I travel. So this is the Peak Design Everyday version two, 20 liters in black. I've been using the Peak Design Everyday version 1 for a couple of years and I recently upgraded to the version 2. There's definitely a lot of nice improvements that I like about it. Let's just go through it one by one. So first of all, let's start off with the tripod. So here on the side, uh, it's attached to this strap. So you can just pull this strap, undo it, and this is the tripod that I use. So this is the Manfrotto B3 Advance carbon fiber tripod. I have been using this for about maybe one or two years now and really, really good because it's quite light um, and it, it's very sturdy and it gets the job done. And I really like this ball head because then you can keep twisting it and adjusting your frame really, really easily. And then the twist legs is also really nice because you can extend them really, really quickly and then push them back really quickly and lock it in place. So yeah, it's very handy. No complaints about this tripod, highly recommend. So the good thing about this bag is that like, it comes with all these straps. So there's straps here, uh, straps in here. So you can hook lots of stuff on it. You can strap a tripod like this, or a tripod at the bottom. So it's all like tucked away and hidden and the design is really, really nice. And so when I'm not using my tripod, I can just, tuck the strap into this pocket right here and so it's all hidden. The zips also have this feature where it undoes like this and you can hook it onto another hook here which means it's really really safe and no one like when you're out traveling you can have that peace of mind so no one can really steal your stuff so you can't really open that now. All right so let's get into it. Uh, let's start over here, which is the main compartment. The good thing about this bag is I never really need to put it down on the ground because it's all access on the sides. And so I always just like sling it on my shoulder and open it on the side and access all the things inside. So I'm gonna open it here. So it's got all my stuff that I carry. So let's get started. So this is my main camera that I use. This is the Sony a7R4, which I recently upgraded to at the end of last year from the a7R2. And on the body right now is a 24 to 70 f2.8 G master lens. This is usually the default setting when I'm out and about. So I usually start off with a 2470 because it has like a good mid range to it. It can go sort of a little bit wide and also a little bit tele. Um, and so that's usually what I start off with. The reason why I use the Sony system is because it's a mirrorless system. So it's much more compact than a Canon or a Nikon DSLR with a mirror in it. So keep in mind that all the gear that I'm going to be showing you in this video is an amalgamation of about maybe six or seven years of photography work. I've accumulated and bought them all throughout that time. And I didn't just start off with this camera. Um, I actually started off with a Canon 1100D that I bought for about like be 200 300 and i had a 50 mil f 1.8 lens the plastic one i kept shooting on it until i outgrew it until i decided to switch to an a7 II, which is my first full frame mirrorless body so i invested in that and then started buying uh, all the full frame lenses and then i slowly upgraded to the a7 r2 and then now the a7 r4 so this is the default setting so the reason why i like it again is because it's so small and compact i mean the lens makes it heavy and makes it big. But I mean, if you're using a Canon or a Nikon, the lens is already gonna be heavy as well. So people say that it's a bit off balance, but once you get used to it, 
it's actually fine and it's it's better because it's light and, and smaller and it can fit the 20 liter bag instead of the 30 liter bag for the Peak Design backpack. I love it because it's 61 megapixels. Uh, I mean, you also need a very fast SD card. So I use the SanDisk 128 or 64 gig, uh, 300 megabyte per second write speed cards. And it's been okay for me so far. And then if your laptop's powerful enough, editing those files is also fine. The reason 61 megapixels is handy is because then you can start cropping on all these different parts and you can have lots of flexibility when you're out shooting. So next in my bag is a 12 to 24 Sony G lens, f4. So this is probably one of my favorite lenses because I shoot a lot of architecture and the 12 mil gives it a super wide angle point of view and I really like that look. It gets tiny bit distorted but you can fix that lens distortion in Lightroom using the lens distortion function. And yeah, it's really handy and really nice. So I have 12 to 24 and then 24 70. Finally on the other side, I carry the 70 to 200 G Master lens, f2.8. So with these three lenses, I have a full range from 12 mil all the way to 200. And I have the complete flexibility when I'm out shooting wherever I am. I don't shoot too much portraits, so I don't really need the super high aperture f1.4 or f1.8 or even f1.2. So f2.8 and f4 for the 1224 is enough for me. So yeah, so this whole, this range from 12 mil all the way to 200 mil is very useful. And it's three lenses and it's like a staple that I always carry everywhere I go, no matter what shoot I'm on, just in case I need a specific type of shot. And finally, when it comes to uh, lenses, I recently got this teleconverter. This is a two times teleconverter. It only works with the 7200 for me. It also works for other telephoto Sony lenses, um, but this makes the 7200 turn into a 140 to 400. So now the range just keeps getting bigger from 12 to 24, 24, 70, 7200, all the way to 400 mil using this little teleconverter. It does make the aperture a little bit smaller, so from the 2.8 it goes up to like 4 to 5.6, but it's still fine and it still works. Yeah, so that's essentially my camera setup and what I use when I'm out and about, and that's all I carry. So let's get into the other parts of the bag. On this side, there's little pouches here. Um, so I've got a spare battery in there, a micro SD card reader, and lots of SD card for backups when I'm out shooting. Oh, I forgot to mention, so the strap I use is the uh, dispatched Create Explore Collab strap. It's really handy because it's quite long and I can do it like across the body. And there's these clips that make it really, really nice. So if you, if you just undo these clips, I can attach this thing, which is the wrist strap and if you don't want a full long strap you can just carry it using this wrist strap like this so yeah so this wrist strap goes into the side with all these other little bits and bobs and yeah what else is in this bag so in this pouch here next to the 12 to 24 i also carry a lens skirt um, this is quite handy when you're shooting on glass um, so you can attach these suction cups to the glass and then shoot your, put your camera through in this hole so you don't get any reflections when you're out shooting. It's very light and you can kind of fold it up and make it small and just chuck it in your bag wherever you go. And on this side, I've just got a few cables and a microfiber cloth to clean lenses and glass or whatever you want to clean. That's it. So the bag can also be accessed from the top part here with this magnetic latch. So you just pull this latch up and then you can open it up. There's this little pouch inside for where I usually put my passport, so it's very safe. And then there's these different levels of tightness that you can close the bag up to. So there's this is the default setting where it's tight and compact, but if you have more stuff, you can hook it up to this one or even to the very top one, which I never use. I don't recommend putting anything like super valuable at the very top for safety reasons. And also it's a little bit harder to access because it's much easier to access from the sides. One thing I forgot to mention before was that the bag has these dividers inside so um, you can actually customize it the way however you want. Um, this is how I've done it so I've like got three levels 
and you can open the top and make it into a shelf or a lens and then the inside bit for my camera and then you can also have these little pockets here where I keep like drone batteries so they're tucked away and hidden. You use the space as much as you can inside your bag. There's also a pocket at the very top here. It's a laptop sleeve so I usually put my laptop in there. So if I'm opening that up right now, uh, slide up the laptop and this is the laptop I use currently which is the Razer Blade 15 Advance. I've been using this laptop for about half a year now and haven't had any issues with it and it's been really really good. Um, performs really well, can edit the 61 megapixel photos. Yeah, very compact 15 inch. It's nice to travel with as well. I usually carry with me a mouse which is the MX Master 1. Very worn out because I use it every day for editing. Um, so yeah. Lastly, in this bag here, uh, there's also a pocket at the very top, uh, which I keep a card reader, a power bank, which is a 10,000 milliamp power bank from Samsung with a fast charging wireless charger at the top. So I can charge my watch on there or my Galaxy Buds. A bunch of T5 uh, hard drives. These are very, very, very handy when it comes to traveling. Um, I've got three, two terabytes, and one one terabyte and they are really fast and really really good for editing large photos um, and they're very compact and finally just a couple of pens just because sometimes you need to write stuff and then also there's this sleeve here where you can attach it to your wheelie suitcase when you're traveling i have this peak design capture clip which is very handy when you're out traveling because then you can just like attach your camera onto this and it's got a lock, it's very safe and you can walk around without needing to hold on to your camera it's just attached to your shoulder one thing that I would say could be an improvement on this bag would be maybe having like thicker straps because if you're walking around for a really really long time or you're going up hiking or doing a big trek uh, it can get a bit tiring on the shoulders and it can get a bit painful uh, but I'm sort of used to it now and yeah, hopefully in version 3 they make the shoulder strap a little bit wider. But other than that, I have no complaints about this bag. It's been really, really good and I highly recommend it. Last thing I want to show is that uh, whenever I need to carry a drone, sometimes it can fit in that bag too. But other times when I know that I'll be needing a drone, I usually carry this with me, which is the Mavic 2 Pro bag. It comes in the Fly More combo when you buy it. Um, so inside the bag, um, I have obviously the Mavic 2 Pro, which is my drone of choice. I think it's probably the best drone in the market right now because it's small, you can fold it up and the camera quality is really, really good. I think it's the same camera quality as the Phantom 4 Pro, which is the drone I used before it and it was massive and it's so hard to carry around. So this drone's been really, really handy for me. It flies well, it's very reliable. Um, and I connect it to this uh, smart controller which is also very handy because then I don't need to waste my battery on my phone so I carry this around um, connect it to my drone and the connection time from this to the drone and to flying like from from the moment you take everything out of your bag uh, you can fly up much faster and quicker and I find that the connection between the remote and the drone is much more reliable and safe but yeah and then inside here there's another battery so I, so I have four drone batteries that I carry around with me um, and then there's also spare propellers and spare joystick thingies I don't know what these are called finally the phone I currently use is the Samsung Galaxy Ultra 5G can't complain about this phone I've been using it for maybe one or two months now and the camera on it is really really amazing I'll show you a couple of shots that I've taken from here but yeah, that's it. This is all the gear I use for photography. So one of the most frequently questions I get is what camera to buy when you're a beginner or what camera you should be using as a beginner. I think the best camera is the one you have. So if it's a smartphone or it's a little pocket camera, you should use that and try to use it as best as you can. Once you use it a lot and know the ins and outs of it exactly, then you should upgrade to a bigger camera. And you'll realize what camera will suit you best. So if you start off on a Canon system and you, if you like it, then you should just keep going and using it. If you don't like it, if you prefer something smaller, then look into mirrorless bodies. It doesn't have to be a full frame mirrorless. It could be like a Sony a6000 or a Fuji or an, or an Olympus. The only thing that has a manual function to it and you can learn all the manual settings of what aperture, shutter speed, ISO, 
all that stuff and something that can teach you all those three should do fine. The more understanding you have of these camera settings, uh, it doesn't really matter what camera you shoot on and you can shoot on whatever camera and you can still get the same results because it's not about the camera, it's about how you shoot and how you creatively look at the world. All right, so I hope you guys found that useful. Just a reminder that there's that gear page on my website. If you're interested in looking at every single thing I use for photography and you're interested in buying any of the stuff on there, make sure you hit those affiliate links so you can support me as a creator. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you drop a like. And if you want to see more videos coming soon, please hit the subscribe button. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.